What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Jurassic World Evolution 2. We are back in an empty map but this time we're going to do a spin wheel park where we build an actual park and basically try to lure guests in. Like we're taking a break from the sanctuaries to kind of focus on this. So what I want to do is kind of get an arrival point. First things first. Let's see if we can get, I don't know, maybe a... I don't think Biosyn has one. Let's get a DPG styled one of these. There we go. So I'm thinking we put the structures here and then we put like a, a building here. We're going to close the park for a minute just so no guests enter the park. All right, because guests kind of have a tendency to enter a park when they, um, you know, when it's not ready because of the buildings. It's not even about the dinosaurs yet. Now, I was thinking about putting the buildings here. So I'm going to put a restaurant here. Right next to it, we're going to put, like, a drink. Why aren't food and drink, like, two... Why are they two separate buildings? Why can't they be, like, like the same building? You know, and I don't know, maybe replace one of them with, like, entertainment or whatever. You would have food and drink over here. You would have, like, shopping, and then you'd have that. All right. Let me change this, because they always have authentic sushi. I kind of don't want that. Let's just have, like, a a regular fast food joint. So we'll put burgers and fries here. And then we got action figures. Yeah, that's that's about right. So that's what we'll have. And then, like, of course, we'll put, like, a, a hotel, like, next to it. Or should we get a little creative with it? No, let's get a little creative with it. Maybe put, like... The hotel, like, over here. And then just have, like, maybe, uh, like, the shopping over here. And then, of course, we need to put in, like, an emergency shelter and a bathroom. So I'll put an emergency shelter over here. And then we'll put, like, a, a bathroom next to it. I know I'll get to the dinosaurs in a minute. I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to get everything ready. All right, and I'm thinking we save this space here for, like, enclosures and whatever. And, of course, maybe move this a little further back, and then we could, like, add in, like, another path. So, at some point, we could have paths going in different directions and whatever. Yeah, okay, that's a good start. Maybe we'll decorate the path, maybe? Yeah, I'll see if we can decorate the path. All right, now that we basically got that out of the way, let's move on to our first dinosaur. Alright, so finally we're on our first dinosaur. Notice I've got a huge wheel, which is basically all of the species in the game. So what is our first species going to be? Let's take a look. What are we starting with? A relatively small herbivore, Pachycephalosaurus. Alright, so for these guys... I'm thinking we get, like, an enclosure. Of course, we're going to have them, like, share an enclosure with other herbivores, if we can. So I'm just going to, like, curve this so then we have that. Make it, like, big enough where we can add in, like, more than one species of herbivore. We should get, like, a viewing gallery for, like, over here. There we go. And then maybe a viewing dome. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Viewing dome can go here. There we go. So you guys can see the dinosaurs a bit better. And by you guys, I mean the guests that enter the park. Alright, um, let's get a hatchery going. <coughs> Jurassic World ones. Sorry. My bad, I sneezed. I know my park is closed. I get it. Path there. We're not gonna open it till we get our first dinosaur. So you know what I should do? Give them, like, do what I did, like, last time with the sanctuaries and give them, like, random traits. So each one is different from another. So I don't know what Packy wants. What does the Packy want? Let me see. Uh, what's your environment? You want ground leaf. That's basically all you want. Okay, all right. You're not very fussy. All right, so let me modify the genome. And we're going to do what we do with other wheel parks. We're going to add ten species per episode. So we're going to add in 10 more species, or 9 more species after this. So I'm just giving them the 25% chance of getting each trait, just so they have, like, different traits. That should be good enough for the packies, right? 
our first dinosaur. We got social and fit. All right. Any combat related traits? We got a fit one. A couple of fit ones. We got a strong one, a defensive one, and a couple of strong ones. There we go. We'll add all eight of them. Just so we have different species and whatever. You know, I'm going to move this a little back a little more. Just so it, like, covers the entire enclosure. Alright. They're done. Let's release the Packies. Our first dinosaur. I just got a Hammond Collection Pachycephalosaurus not that long ago. The unboxing review probably won't be out for like a week or so, but I did manage to get one. So these guys should be content. They're just expanding their territory, so we don't really know for sure. But now that we've got our first dinosaur, we can officially open the park. There we go. Alright, now with that out of the way, let's move on to creature number two. Alright, our second creature for the episode is... Archaeornithomimus. Okay, we can easily have those share the enclosure with the Packy. Yeah, we could easily have that happen. So Archaeornithomimus, we can throw right in here. Wait, what do you want? Like, what do you need? Ground fruit. Okay, you guys prefer ground fruit. Alright, sounds good. I don't want it to interfere with the... The Packies or whatever. Yeah, the Packies should be content. Alright, so Archaeornithomimus will throw them in here with the Packies. Let's see what the Packies are all about. They're doing a social animation. That's cool. Alright. Archaeornithomimus is ready. Let's release them. All right, so that's dinosaur number two done. Let's move on to creature number three. Our third creature for the episode is... Shonisaurus. Okay, our first aquatic. So for our aquatic, what we should do is uh, build like a little enclosure here. Like a lagoon area. This will be where the Shonisaurus goes. So if we go into here, we need like lagoon section. Of course we want it big enough where the Shonisaurs can like wander around and whatever, do whatever they want. There we go. Let me destroy some of that path so we can make it a little easier. We'll put a lagoon hatchery and we'll only have like one hatchery per, per um, faction. This way here the enclosures don't look ugly with the hatcheries there. So, yeah. Alright, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, getting the, uh, lagoon hatchery. Oh, no, wait. We already got the lagoon hatchery. We want a viewing stand. We want, we want ways to see them. We got a lagoon stand, like, over here. We'll get one of these. As well as one of these lagoon domes. Alright, we should be good to go with the Shonisaurus. Let's... We'll do the same thing with the aquatics. Additional bays and accelerated growth. There we go. So Shonisaurus, right away, our first aquatic. So we'll throw this guy in. We'll randomize the genome. Make sure they have a 25% chance of getting each trait. If we get Ichthyosaurus or any smaller aquatics, we'll probably throw them in with the Shonisaurus because... Shonisaurs are relatively peaceful, so they'll, they should be fine. Alright, so we've still got plenty of space for whatever, which is cool. So, so far our park consists of Pachycephalosaurus, Archaeonothomimus, and Shonisaurus. So let's go ahead and, we got long-lived and small appetite, defensive and long-lived. Alright, Shonisaurus is being added in. You know what, while we wait, let's move on to... Creature number four. All right, our fourth creature of the episode is... What are we going to put in next? Plesiosaurus. Okay. Now, I do have combat turned off, but I think we could just throw them in with the Shonisaurs. All right. Shonisaurus. Let's release it. Our first aquatic. Actually, you know what? I was hoping to put Ichthyosaurus in with these guys. I don't know if these guys will get on. I mean, I do have combat turned off, but, you know, we'll have to see. 
All right, let me just, uh, we do have a strong plesiosaur and we do have a resilient one. All right, we'll put all six of them in. While we wait for them, let's move on to creature number five. Our fifth creature of the episode is Dilophosaurus. Okay, our first actual carnivore. So for these guys, I'm thinking about putting them on the other side. So let's get the, the hatchery out of here for now. Let's release the plesiosaurs. And then, of course, off-camera, I'll accommodate for, like, facilities and whatever to keep the guests happy and whatever. Alright, so let me go ahead and, uh, make this into an enclosure. Of course, we'll give them a patch of water so they can drink. We'll put, like, a... We'll put the viewing gallery, like, over. That's a research viewing gallery. We need, like, a regular viewing gallery. Let me see ya. We'll go into Jurassic World and just put that there. And then we'll put a carnivore feeder, like, right in front of it. That should be good. And then we'll put the hatchery, like, over here. There we go. That'll be our fifth creature added in. Alright, so let's go into Dilophosaurus and get these guys real quick. Our first carnivore. We'll randomize the genome, and we'll get all eight of them. Because Dilophosaurs are usually in, like, large groups in this game, and the franchise in general, so it only makes sense. Let's release the Dilophosaurs. Actually, before we do that, let's get, like, a viewing dome. And put that, like, over here. There we go. All right, that should be good. Dilophosaurus. Our first carnivore. Alright, so that's dinosaur or creature number five out of the way. Let's move on to creature number six. Alright, creature number six. What will it be? Another aquatic, Adenborosaurus. Alright. So I'm thinking for this guy, we'll put them in like a separate lagoon. I'm thinking their lagoon can like go over here. Maybe I'll put these guys, like, by themselves or whatever. Alright, that should be good. Alright, let's get a, um, a viewing stand for, like, over here. We'll get that going. We'll get this path over here. And then we'll get one of those lagoon viewing galleries. Or viewing domes, even. We'll put one, like, over here. We'll put another on the other side. And then we'll put a third one just up here. Just so you guys can see the herbivores a bit better. Alright. Let's move the lagoon hatchery out of here. Over to here. There we go. And now once again, we do need marine fish feeders. Let's go in here, because that's what they eat. Marine, marine fish. There we go. Alright. Let's go ahead and release Adenborosaurus. So we'll randomize the color. We've still got four more of these to go. Four more species. There we go. Adenborosaurus is being created. So our park is coming along nicely so far. And of course, I'll do like the facilities and whatever off camera. Alright, so Adenborosaurus should be, you know, ready to go. Let's uh, just release them all. And while we wait, let's move on to creature number seven. All right, creature number seven. What will it be? Already with a giant one. A Patasaurus. Okay. I don't think they'll be able to fit in here unless I expand this bit. So what I'm going to do is just uh, build like a separate enclosure for these guys. They need a lot more space. What we could do is like have this place be like a, a gyrosphere tour at some point. All right, let's get that done. And then let's release the Adenborosaurus. And then for the Apatosaurus, I'm thinking about throwing in four of them. Alright, so that's that done. Let's move the hatchery. 
out of here. We'll put it here. And this could be like a gyrosphere tour. Really in the park, give them a close, like as close of encounters as possible. There we go, that should be perfect. So what we'll do, in the middle we'll put like a big body of water like over here. And then we'll like put some vegetation because I'm pretty sure Apatosaurus likes like tall things. Yeah, tall leaf. That's what they pretty much like. That's that's what we'll give them, tall leaf. And then, of course, we'll give them some, like, forest. Like, we'll expand that. Give that, like, forest, like, over here and whatever. Yeah, that should be good. And then we'll put, like, viewing domes. So if you don't feel like riding the gyrosphere, you'll have a, a way of viewing the dinosaurs. And you don't have to move. Alright, let's release the Apatosaurs. I'm thinking about getting four of them. So we're going to modify the genome. We'll have four of them just so we have more of them. Alright, cool. Four so we have more. That's got a nice ring to it, actually. Apatosaurus is being thrown in. We'll probably put in other herbivores like maybe Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, Gallimimus. We'll, we'll throw other herbivores in here at some point. Alright. I think they are ready. Let's go. Apatosaurus. Yeah, because they need somewhere a lot bigger. If it was like a Margosaurus, we could easily throw them in the smaller enclosure. I want to make sure the Apatosaurs have plenty of food. And plenty of water. And plenty of space as well. Where they can roam around. Alright. While the Apatosaurs are being released, let's move on to creature number 8, I think it is? Alright, what is our 8th creature of the episode going to be? Proceratosaurus, alright? We obviously need to put in a separate enclosure for these guys. Because they're, you know, carnivores as well. So, I'm sure we could throw them in with the Apatosaurs with no problem. But you know what? I don't want to take any chances with that. So, for Proceratosaurus, I'm thinking about maybe putting them next to the Dilophosaurs. Just give them, like, a separate enclosure. They're not quite together, but not quite apart either. So, the Apatosaurs are still being released. So, we'll have to just build the park... So what we're going to do here is just get a viewing gallery for over here and then get like viewing domes. We'll get a viewing dome, one on one side and one on the other. There we go. Of course, we'll get like a patch of water as well. Make that a little bit smaller. We'll give these guys like a patch of forest. And then to decorate a little bit, we'll decorate this with shrubbery. They're not herbivores, so they don't, like, need, like, plants and whatever. They just need, like, carnivore stuff, meat, and whatever. Alright. Let's see, the Apatosaurs should be ready. Yep, there we go. The Apatosaurs are done. We'll release the Proceratosaurs, like, over here. Yeah, let's get the Proceratosaurs, so they should be all the way down here. This, and then two more. So, Proceratosaurus... There we go, we'll throw in Proceratosaurus. So let's just go ahead and throw these in. That should be good to go. Our second carnivore. They won't take too long, so I'll just wait for them. And then we'll move on to carnivore or dinosaur number nine. Alright, they're done, let's release them. Alright, so that's Proceratosaurus done. Let's move on to creature number nine. Our ninth creature of the episode is Mataburosaurus. You know what? We can easily we could either throw them in here or we could throw them in here. We'll throw them in with the Apatosaurus. That's what we'll do. So we'll just get this over to here. Wait, what do they like? What do they like for food? Ground fiber, okay. Let me just fill their home with ground fiber. 
decorate this a bit so at least these guys have food anyway. And now let's release them. Mataborosaurus. So that's creature number nine added in. Let's move on to creature number ten. And the final creature for the episode is... Dunkelosteus. Okay. All right. Our first, basically, apex predator. Pretty much. We'll put that, like, in the back somewhere. Or... Hmm. You know, we'll put it over here. We'll put it over here. This could be, like, the lagoon section. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So we'll get, like, the enclosure over here for Dunkelosteus. Now, these guys do feed from the shark feeder, so we're gonna have to put a shark feeder, like, next to the... next to the viewing stand. Yeah. Shark feeder. We'll put two shark feeders over here. That's what we'll do. And then we'll put in some of those lagoon domes. We'll put one on one side, one on the other. Alright, we're doing well. We've got some very iconic dinosaurs here. And then by the end of the episode, we'll see what the star attraction is. Like our most popular attraction by the end of this. It's probably going to be Dunkelosteus, I would imagine, because Dunkelosteus is pretty popular. It could be Shonisaurus, or it could be or it could be Apatosaurus because of how big these guys are. I doubt it's Mataburosaurus. Dilophosaurus might be in with a chance, though, because they are pretty popular. Maybe Pachycephalosaurus or something like that? Yeah, well, we'll have to see. Alright. Dunkelosteus. Let's throw that in. Let's release the Dunkelosteus. Three Devonian fish. Alright. So let's see what our star attraction is. Adenborosaurus at the moment. But probably because the Dunkelosteus is just settling in. So I'm guessing we probably will need transport at some point. So let me see. Maybe we could build like a zip line over here at least. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll build a zip line. That should be good. Now they'll be able to get to wherever a lot easier. So the Dunkelosteus are just making themselves at home. And yeah, looking good. Actually, we could make the enclosure a bit smaller. Alright, that's perfect. That's perfect. I think they still got enough space to swim around and do whatever they want. Alright! Alright! And with that, I think that's going to have to wrap it up for this episode of The Wheel Park. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. But until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.